a franchise that's been around for over a decade, Fire Emblem wouldn't hit portables until the arrival of the Game Boy Advance. When the portable debuted in Nintendo Space World in 2000, players got a glimpse of the game in very early stages. It was tentatively titled Fire Emblem Dark Maiden. Though early screens showed a game that looks very different, the end product was a tried and true Fire Emblem. This was supposedly a reworking of Fire Emblem 64, but with no information, we don't know how much of this is true. With the success of Marth and Roy in Super Smash Bros. Melee, interest in Fire Emblem in the West was at an all-time high. It was the perfect time to bring the series over. Another glimmer of hope came when Intelligence Systems' own War series finally arrived in the West after a decade of being Japan only, and it became a sleeper hit in the West. Western Fire Emblem fans waited and waited, but nothing ever came. Fire Emblem Furin no Tsurugi, or Sword of Seals, once again didn't see a Western release. Apparently, this game wasn't dumbed down enough to appease the West. Many assumed that the tutorial was added to accommodate first-time Western players. While it's insulting to think that Western players needed a tutorial, chances are it was added for a new generation of players in Japan as well. It's a very simple tutorial that trained players in the basics. This game also didn't do anything major to surprise longtime fans. There's really no way I can sugarcoat this. Fire Emblem Sword of Seals is a very bare-bones Fire Emblem. Many of the great features from the previous two outings were stripped away. It would be faster if I just listed what's there rather than what's been removed. The best way to describe this game is to take the original NES Fire Emblem and add in the weapons triangle, a multiplayer mode, rescuing, guidance chapters, vastly improved support feature, and a hard mode. While this game is simplified, there are places that are simplified in good ways. For example, battle calculations. The game now does it for you. Sure, subtracting defense from your attack in the other games isn't too big of a deal. The game doing the math for you speeds up the process, allowing you to attack without pausing to double check how much damage you're doing. It's also nice enough to tell you if you'll be able to do a double attack as well instead of having to look through the stats. Then comparing the weapon's weight, and finally looking at constitution to figure it out. These little tweaks speeds things up to make the gameplay a little faster paced. Other things include being able to change the position of your party members before the start of a battle. In the previous game, you couldn't do that, and figuring out how to get a character into the proper side is a pain and often impossible. You could use your rescue or warp staffs, but this forces you into wasting precious resources that could have been avoided. In Sword of Seals, you can change the position to better plan out your first few moves, giving you a better advantage. For the most part, Thracia 776's difficulty was well designed, but Fog of War was especially annoying. The entire map was pitch black, so had you not played the game before, you'd be at loss as to which direction you were supposed to go. You can forget about planning your moves since you can't see the terrain. You have to always rely on torches. Sword of Seals fixes this problem by hiding only the enemies and not the terrain. You can see which way you're supposed to go and be able to plan out some kind of strategy. Compared to other Fire Emblems, Sword of Seals is also a pretty easy game. So for the first time, multiple difficulty settings were added to this game. The hard mode increased the enemy's stats and added extra reinforcements to the maps. It isn't as interesting and dynamic as Genealogy of the Holy Wars, but it gave players of different skill levels a choice. Though it would be nice to have it available from the start rather than unlocked after you beat the game. Even at normal difficulty, it's no cakewalk, and you still have to deal with permanent death. This game contained a strange mode that lasted through all of the Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems, and that's the Link Arena. For the first time, there is a multiplayer mode in Fire Emblem, but it's not what you think. The Link Arena is a character versus mode where you pick characters from your save file to make a team of five to pit against another person's team. You can also pit yourself against the teams you've created controlled by the computer. There is a little bit of strategy involved, but it's hardly the most memorable feature. In another attempt to offer more content beyond the main game, you're given bonus maps called Trial Maps to play. These maps are just storyless maps for you to fight in. There are only a mere 5 maps, and they really don't have much to offer other than to say that you've played them. 
one or two of the maps does offer a different victory scenario, but as to why they didn't have it in the actual game, I have no idea. You do get to play as some extra characters like enemy generals and NPC characters, but many of the interesting characters require multiple playthroughs to unlock. Whether you want to play through the game 10 times just to unlock all the characters depends on how much you love the main cast. Because the new support function does give you incentive to replay the game a couple of times. The new support function is the biggest change in this game. It's a modified version of the lover's support and adds new strategy as well as rounding out the entire cast. In order to get supports, two characters must spend a certain amount of turns standing or performing actions next to one another. Once they've earned enough support points, a support conversation can be initiated. You can't just pair anyone together though. Only a certain preset of combinations are allowed. And all characters have multiple people they can support. Support ties in with a new character affinity, where different affinities will grant different boosts in stats. Maybe you want to use support to boost up a character's weakness. Or maybe you want to make an already powerful character even stronger. The choice is yours. Another choice is how many characters you want to support. A support conversation can be initiated 5 times. You can support 5 different characters each at C rank for smaller spread out boosts. Or you can focus on reaching A rank with one character, and B rank with another for a bigger boost in a smaller range of stats. While not essential to the story, support conversations will enrich the entire cast giving them personality and backstory like never before. Nobody feels left out in this story. It's a great way to spotlight every member without dragging out the central storyline. The plot also harkens back to the days of Marv's story with a war involving humans and dragons. The setting is the Elub continent with a brand new cast of characters. The main character is none other than Roy. It's been a thousand years since the scouring, the war of humans and dragons, and the continent was at peace. Until suddenly, the Kingdom of Bern, led by King Zephiel, launched an attack conquering neighboring countries and soon sets its sights on the Lycian League. Hearing this news, Roy returns from his military training to help his father Eliwood, who had fallen ill. After defeating the bandits, Roy was sent in his father's place to unite with the other lords of the Lycian League. Along the way, Roy stumbles into Princess Guinevere of Bern, who escaped to meet the Lycian leaders hoping to prevent a war. Eventually, Roy would have to fight his way through the continent and prevent the world from being taken over by dragons. Story-wise, it's pretty straightforward. In fact, it feels like a retelling of Marv's story, or at least the basic setup. The starting party mirrors the original using many of the character archetypes from the first game. You have the useless old guy, the red and green knights, a scarred muscle-bound mercenary, axe-wielding brothers, and much more. This isn't a reclaim your homeland cliche though, since Burn hasn't conquered the world yet. The balance of power on the continent shifts back and forth, with Burn pulling the strings and attacking countries from within, using corrupt officials and traitors to bring down their enemies. Zephiel himself is part tragic villain, part madman. The once loving brother of Guinevere now wants to destroy all of humanity so dragons can reclaim the land. He was a promising young man who was good with a pen and a sword, and has the support of the people. Yet despite all of that, Zephiel tries his best to win his father's approval, only to be met with scorn and hatred. The spoilers starts now. His father would try again and again to murder his own son, until one final failed murder attempt that snapped Zephiel, driving him into killing his father. Driven to madness, Zephiel seeks to wipe out humanity and awaken the demon dragon Aiden with a fire emblem to destroy mankind. The fire emblem also returns in this game and is the imperial seal of Burn. The demon dragon Aiden was once a divine dragon that was captured by other dragons and turned into a demon dragon to fight humanity. Her soul was destroyed so she would obey commands and spawn artificial war dragons to fight. Harmat, the leader of the eight heroes, took pity on Aiden and sealed her up with the help of the Fire Emblem and the Sword of Seals. Harmat would later found the Kingdom of Burn, and the Fire Emblem became a national treasure. While Sword of Seals wasn't as groundbreaking as the previous entries, it did set the foundation for all future Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems. As for Western fans, riding on the glimmer of hope, someone set up a website to help newcomers prepare for the arrival of Sword of Seals. It became one of the largest early English-speaking Fire Emblem communities.
They all gathered together awaiting the English release, but it was not to be. They eventually lost hope of ever seeing Sword of Seals being released, and turned their attention to the next Fire Emblem game that was announced, Fire Emblem Rika no Ken. Thank you.